Derek Franz is in the Digital Arts and New Media program and a part of this month's series of interviews that I'm doing with all the Danamites, those that are graduating. That's the second year. It's a two-year program, getting your MFA. And Derek Franz has uh, so generously given us his time because this can be a very, very stressful time for a lot of <laughs> Graduates coming down the pike, getting it done, writing your thesis. Derek is uh, giving us a little, no, not so bad. Uh, I'm glad to see that you're you're not feeling stressed. Oh, not at all. I, I have a <laughs> absurdly uh, <laughs> considerate work ethic. So, uh, you know, if if you mind mind the field uh, well before uh, you know you got to reap the harvest, then you, you just sit back and watch things grow. And, and uh, personally, what that means is just you know. Months ago, you know, I have to weld this. Uh, months ago, I'm going to need a, a sine wave generator to uh, pre-create, like, a laser cut vector plan. You know, everything has to get done. Just make lists, and it's done before you even need to worry. You sound like a really good project manager, Derek Franz. Oh, it's it's kind of stressful to try to manage a project, because um, they usually would involve lots of people. And, I mean, if it's well beyond my own uh, capacity. I, I get kind of scared of micromanaging. I, I mean, I got to micromanage my own like art systems so so, so deeply because a lot of my art works with uh, it's like sensitivity of systems. Sometimes it's, uh, it uses, it just doesn't use computers. It just uses uh, like space or vibration to make sure that uh, like a resonant system or, uh, you know, just frictions or, or contact pads are all aligned. And these... Uh windows uh, create a, an interactive sculptor? Yep. I, I wouldn't do art unless it was interactive. Supposedly, uh, if I'm ADD, uh, I need art that changes so that uh, I don't get bored. So if I'm going to make art, it's going to have a, it's going to have some twist. To, so it's uh, probably ideally, uh, I would only make art that uh, couldn't really be represented well in a photo because it's a, it's a, it's a field that needs the eye or it's a time that needs, uh, you know, the tapping foot. So Derek Franz is a sculptor, a computer abuser, inquisitor. He's uh, putting the computer up against the wall and trying to extract all that it can out of it. Not only, uh, I think, technologically, but also you actually repurpose the hardware of the, of the you do digital repurposing and extracting, I think is what you said. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely say I got an atomistic sense of uh, computer use and that, uh, you know, we hardly understand what transistors do, especially when there's thousands and thousands screen printed on the, the micro layer. And uh, yeah, just from years of doing surplus uh, salvage work, I mean, you just open up computers, you open up printers, you open up things that are just like technological archaeology and, and slowly it seeps in like what a solenoid can do or what a spring can uh, offer uh, a push button or like a, a variation on a signal. And your piece that will be in the Digital Arts and New Media Graduate uh, uh, big exhibition that's happening April 27th through 28th plus May 2nd through the 5th at the Digital Arts Research Center. That's dark over there by the music building. Um, this will be the two thir 2013 Digital Arts and New Media MFA exhibition. And Derek, your piece is called Disinterest Action Machines. Oh yeah, that's that's one of the variations of the names that it got, gets modulated to. But the show is called Ground Control, and uh, you know it's a play on grounding, like being grounded, kind of like a yogi, or being grounded like a circuit, and safety I mean, control as well. I mean, I, I, I'm making f for the show is a lot of a lot of sequencers. Uh, I did the electronic music studio back in 2003 here on campus, and we just we just uh, ate our heart out playing with those. Uh, giant machines, too many knobs, too many lights, and, and just patterns would unfold out of them. So in, in honor of, of uh, just uh, analog synthesis and, and old methods for creating music, I decided to do the same thing, but uh, this time around I'm using uh, sausage and ham to control the signals. <laughs> meat. Uh, meat playing video games. Ground control. So it's ground beef control a little bit. <laughs> Beef control. Derek Franz is here in the house telling us about his uh, his project. Uh, Derek received his undergraduate here at UCSC in philosophy. Um, who would you say was one of your biggest uh, influences? Oh, you said it was pre-Socratics. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. we always, you know, it's come thesis time, you always got to read Wittgenstein and think about, like, climbing, transcending through logic and reaching something that's, uh, you know, above and beyond. But like, Wittgenstein ended up just teaching kindergarten for most of his life and learning about how kids play games, how the, how the mind develops. But yeah, pre-Socratic is where it's at. I mean, deconstruction is <laughs> where it's at. I, my, all my art's about physically deconstructing machines and... Uh, uh, you know, deconstruction with Derrida and uh, Foucault is all about taking what's in the uh, the margin and allowing it to be uh, uh, emplaced in the center, just ritualistically. Whatever is not, it should be, you know, given its chance. Everything should be questioned. Yeah, especially the questions. Especially the questions. Um, you use, as you mentioned, ham, um, meat, that uh, you're able to activate in a way that becomes interactive. Yeah, I'll probably just have to thank uh, good old Steve Jogues and Wozniak for p coming up with a, a company that could uh, mass-produce uh, capacitive sensors. But, you know, we're getting kind of out of phase with those pressure sensors. You touch, you get one control on the screen. The new hype is, uh, you know, up to 11 touches on your iPad. And uh, it turns out that all 11 of those touches could be controlled by, uh, you know, something that's not, not alive anymore. So I, I try to use uh, luncheon meat or, uh, you know, hot dogs, depending on the, the systems. So the, the player piano is uh, controlled by ham and then uh, especially laser cut uh, stencils of art so that the multi-touches are based on where the ham can peek through. And then there's an, uh, a digital rotisserie that's a, a reworked aluminum uh, Weber grill. And it's, it's you know, blasted open and, and there's machine cogs uh, installed in it so that two iPads can rotate while about eh, 48, like half hot dogs can just, uh, you know, s softly caress the surfaces <laughs> of these rotating iPads. And yeah, I had to I had to custom design some barbecue software. I'm probably the first person to ever need to do that. But you can imagine a time in the future where touchpads can handle high temp and we're just going to like play little touchpad games next to our electric elements on our stove. Just keep us entertained while we're cooking breakfast. Yeah, it gives the, the idea of stop playing with your food a, a whole other dimension. Thank you, Derek. I, I might not have to be I might not be able to say that as easily anymore. <laughs> Derek Franz is here. He is a digital arts and new media graduating student who will be in the uh, digital arts and new media exhibition. Again, it starts April 27th through 28th uh, with the usual gallery hours which are from 10 to 4 p.m. in dark and then you um, have the reception the biggie will be May 2nd and then the rest of the weekend there will be um, the same gallery hours you'll be able to meet the artists uh, interact with their pieces a lot of them as well as interacting with the art artists themselves so Derek wh what made you uh, what made you go from philosophy to, uh, well, you mentioned Wittgenstein teaching students. You taught students. You taught children, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, um, to answer your question before anything else, uh, I think uh, Socrates had this idea of aporia, which was uh, like you were without pore anymore, like your sponge is saturated kind of thing. And, uh, I mean, that's kind of related to, like, the technological revolution a little bit because we're kind of desensitized we're kind of just saturated with with information and logos everywhere and so you know it's almost like i gotta i gotta kill the goblin king here i gotta i gotta usurp the usurper and all that means right now is uh you know just like shocking shocking uh, with the shock value and in this case it's a form of bio art and it's also just a critique on or a new version of the found art the rectified art uh, and as a recycling artist in general, there's there's really nothing that I really need to create so much as things that I need to glue together. Or solder together. Yeah, yeah, there's thousands of fastening methods. Uh, hopefully I'll uh, attain at least half of the expertise I need in, in them. But just uh, finding pieces and components and, uh, you know, just honoring them, recreating what, what their possibilities are is, uh, is where I'm at. And that's how you uh, talk about this computer abusing yeah uh supposedly systems like computers they can't really generate random numbers they might not have a certain kind of free will they're just deterministic some artists like maybe calder and tingle they worked with machine systems and and they could somehow extract randomosity they would have interlocking gear sets that had missing teeth and then you know if you put together two random systems then the multiplication of those two is something that's probably a little bit outside of the range of human knowledge like a little bit out of our periodic 
Uh, here on campus, we got this teacher named Ben Carson who does music, and he made this really cool software called Unpulsar, and it I taught it for my computer music class last summer, and it would try to define all the different beat signatures, like really wacky ones, like 7 over 34 or 7 over 32, and it turned out that like a lot of the random ones or the rare ones were in the shadows of the obvious ones, and that the mind couldn't, like how far could the mind really latch on to an irrational kind of uh, periodic and yeah, so I'm going to be teaching this class called Kinematics this summer, called uh, Dam 135. It sounds almost like it's upper, upper Div, 135. But uh, yeah, we're going to just be uh, fabricating. I mean, I'm the aficionado. If if we have so much luck to uh, create uh, any any visual object, you can create. And uh, if, if you know how to do vector software design, so we're going to be creating cogs and uh, kinetic systems for mobiles and... Uh, you know, autom automata, like uh, you just turn a crank and then that translates to your energy across a field of, of cogs or springs or, or belts. Derek Franz, explain to us kinematics. That's the name of your class that will be taught summer session two here at UCSC, uh, Danum 135. Kinematics, explain to us, this is an, a word I'm assuming you came up with. Oh, oh. That's the, one of the coolest things about this Danum program is I showed up thinking I was all alone and I didn't have any uh, support. And then all of a sudden, just look back into the 19th century, back when machine and steam systems were uh, the, the high, hottest revolution. And they invented kinematics uh, to be like kind of like an arbitrary human study of mechanical relationships. So if you have lengths of stick and they all have holes on the ends, then you can call them linkages. And then... There's, there's hundreds of different rules, ways that you can connect linkages together to make straight lines, to make oscillations, to make circles. And so it, it mostly just has to do a transfer of energy. So, and uh, you can take it in the physics department. They have a kinematics class where you learn about uh, drawing vectors for, you know, like a forklift or a sliding glass door. But uh, I think we're going to keep it pretty visual. I mean, as an art class, it's all about... Uh, you know, identifying with uh, the aesthetic or, or the feel of these, these objects. So when you say feel of these objects, let's say I find a beautiful piece of wood that I really love to touch, but I also want it to um, interact with other people. Like I want it to light up when it's caressed the right way or something like that. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it could be. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the exact uh, hone center of this class is to go into electrical theory, but I've got, I've got that under my belt too, and I uh, designed a kind of a curriculum website uh, uh, around electromancy last year, and that was all about how you could hide kind of like copper threads inside of like a bushy uh, um, fur, fur fabric, and then just, you know, stroking it left would uh, hit the contacts against a copper panel hidden underneath. Stroking it right would uh, do, do would likewise. Would make it do another thing. Yeah, and, and so just uh, one of my favorite things is just keeping it super analog, like just contact points. Mm -hmm. I'm always taking apart Hammond organs for their little contact pins or pinball machines for their contact plates and circuit etching to, you know, fill in the rest of the pieces that I might need for an idea. And just with pure copper, I mean, people will fight and say you need a, a super light sensitive, pressure sensitive system, but you can do that pretty much all with, uh, with copper plates, just uh, nesting them together so that pressure uh, transfers energy to more and more of the pins. And, you know, as long as it's conductive, the uh, you know the electricity the will, will find its way through the material, right? And it's kind of fun to play with how 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 much resistance builds. Yeah. They have a uh, well. So I would imagine a wood wood would have a resistance. Oh, well, and it gets into yeah. A lot of things are are insulators, but when it gets into sometimes in wood and metal, like it's it's worth just going straight to sound art. One of my favorite things to do with with uh, exotic woods or um, hand-tempered metal is just to resonate them. You put a transducer up to it with a low impedance uh, LFO, low frequency oscillation, and then the material will just pick up what it can. It'll pick up the sounds that um, kind of grok or resonate with itself because most every, any object, especially if it's finely shaped, has a specific frequency or, or sidebands of that frequency that it's always listening for, it's always amplifying. And, you know, be it wood, metal, or in this case, even ham, you know, there's there's signals in it somehow. <laughs> Derek Franz, uh, your stuff sounds really exciting. So you're um, exploring, this is from your little synopsis, you're exploring the different possibilities of... Uh, Inanimate materials? Sometimes flesh, 
um, controlled. I'd say different emotions of emotionalist objects. Uh, nice, with uh, touch screens. So you're interacting through these windows that you're creating. Sometimes, yeah, i got to create them. Sometimes they're already uh, created and I just have to... Uh, Find them. Yeah, just p p put specific software on them to almost uh, offer offer a new possibility, a new thought for the same old object. Well, I'm glad you mentioned uh, programs. You're a Max user. Absolutely. And, and tell us, um, Max is, is not the most popular. I mean, not everybody knows about Max programming, but you can use that to both interact with um, or create interaction with inanimate objects. I used Max MSP Jitter, which was for movie and sound. Yeah, Max MSP Jitter. You could just say it again and be data, music, and video, because that's their uh, that's their domains. But Max was invented maybe in the '80s. Uh, all it was meant to do was be a sequencer for musical artists, and uh, slowly elaborated out to control all those different, uh, you know, nervous system tentacles that we like to refer to as video and and audio, and uh, with microcontrollers. Or uh, other computer interfaces, you can you can control like the Bay Bridge with uh, like your light system. Like I think there was a recent show going up over there. Yeah, thousands yeah. and thousands of maybe a million lights, all multiplexed on one uh, multi computer, one maxi computer. But uh, oftentimes, all multiplexed on one max computer. Oh no, not no, like right, a maxed right. out computer. Maxed out. I know those professionals use like servers uh, at that point. Probably. Right, of course. Um, so you came here uh, as an undergrad. You were able to start on Max. Yeah, 2003. It took me years of contemplation about what I could do with it. First thing I, I was just hanging out in Guatemala one summer. I had taken Elliot Anderson's computer art class, and I was just thinking what I could do with this this program that I knew it had power, but I just didn't quite, uh, you know, get absorbed by it yet. And then I put on a I took an independent study class, totally out of my grasp. It was a 199 before I even taken the the 81 class, and uh, just that independent study let me do a bodysuit performance, which is called Shaman's Avatar, where I had like flex sensors and data gloves on, and then the Max was playing back uh, an avatar of me on the screen behind me. And I also did one of my first like video game uh, theater designs, so a bunch of little sprites on TV. Uh, went through all the different uh, kind of like visual possibilities that the LCD object, which is like the the 2D drawing routine in Max, could do. So that like two characters would be divided by like a screen uh, feedback splitting the center. And uh, But Max is, is a visual data flow language, and if you think that you want to be a programmer but just hate looking at all of those words and you just don't want to know the difference between a colon and a semicolon and, and, a period. and, and <laughs> syntax, like yeah, you yeah. don't have to worry. It's just they're all complete words, and you put a word in a box, and the, the box says, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for your use. I've got, I've got ins and outs. And you can just uh, touch, browse over those ins and outs and find out what it does. And you option click on the object to go to the help file to find out what the object is. So, you know, people look at a set of a thousand new ideas, which is pretty much what Max could be, all the different object names, and they get overwhelmed. But if they knew the, f the first 20 to start on, then they could do their first interactive art pieces, wouldn't even need to buy anything, just a 30-day demo and a, a computer keyboard, a screen, maybe a video camera. Simple no tools way you go. That's Everyone's fabulous. got them. Derek Franz. Showing us uh, what we can do with computers. We're using such little little pieces of them, little parts of them, and you're really interested in using the whole of the... Yeah, just like they say, the human mind is only using 5-10%. Like, whenever you run an app, like you'd be lucky if you're, you're using that much of your computer's capacity. Whenever you drain your computer and you see that uh, spiraling hourglass or, or a rainbow you know that's when your computer's finally maybe thinking finally working as hard as it can and that's the that's the time when we say stop it computer we need we need you to come back to us which is, is kind of strange that finally when it's reaching its capacity it's like it's full uh you know transcendence of its limitations is, is when we're finally frustrated with it when is when we're almost like a you know child learning how to ride a tricycle it's like the first time that they're finally putting their all into it it sounds like a philosopher. <laughs> That's uh, Peter uh, Franz Derek. Derek Franz, gosh. Um, he's been up here talking about his uh, graduate thesis project called Disinterest Action Machines. You say that this is run rendition. What are some other the renditions of the title? Oh, well, Disinteractive Machines, Disinteraction Machines. Uh, before that, it was like Bone Machines trying to. I was originally trying to um, cast gelatin sheets, but. <gasps> 
But the gelatin just wouldn't roll around because the, the player piano, you know how the rolls of paper in the original player piano, they need that little bit of malleability. So, yeah, I just went straight up with, uh, you know, Black Forest ham on a good day or just a <laughs> half-price luncheon meat on a bad day. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of different bio artists out there. There's ones that change DNA of animals and, you know, get all controversial or attach, like, new body parts to themselves. But but there's a certain viscerality just instantaneously, you know, a simple thing. You go to you go to Safeway and, and, and purchase five dollars worth of of biotic uh, system, and you can just you know th- throw. Uh, th- what I did uh, two quarters ago just to test out this theory was uh, gathered like ten banana slugs and had them be the uh, the the controllers for these iPads that were on display. And and people saw it and they saw uh, they they didn't even notice the iPad. You know, it was enough to see someone gathered twenty banana slugs, and then yeah. all of a sudden they see that they're kind of playing. And uh, I'd like to think that that humanity is kind of going to transcend video games soon, and maybe we'll just have a bunch of uh, animals or just uh, computers themselves playing our games so that we can go back to being observers, which is what uh, Pythagoras from ancient Greek thought was like the the purpose of of man or, you know, humanity, men and women, was just to observe all the the many uh, splendors that are around us and... Yeah, if you think about doing one day's hard work, or if you just spend that day pondering, then like your second day of hard work would be so much more valuable because it had a whole day to ponder its possibilities. So Thank you. Observation is yeah. where it's at. Well, yeah, these meat machines are going to let people realize that you know machines aren't for them. Like we can kind of separate ourselves from from this dialogue. You know, we I, at teaching or being a TA here at campus, we're always seeing thousands of eyes feasting on their little uh, iPhone screens. And every once in a while, they might get a little matrix realization that they're kind of trapped inside something. But I think I think uh, art, revolutionary art that can that can kind of just uh, cause cause the psychological nerve to twitch and kind of realize what your relationship with uh, your machines is would, would kind of help the people. Maybe uh, you know, get them to squint, squint and scratch their eyes. Look at look at the sun a little bit more. Right on. This is uh, this has been Derek Franz telling us uh, his wonderful work. Thank you so much, Derek, for coming on. If you missed any part of the show, you'll be able to go to artistonart.com. Uh, you'll be able to see the video and the podcast of this show. Uh, you can also go to Twitter. Uh, Vanya is out there live twittering as we speak. And um, Derek, I wish you the best graduation um, and exhibition. Yeah, and that's what's next, Nada. Can't Thanks. wait to play with your meat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, show show up early at the shows because the meat can dried out. We're gonna have docents on on site to spritz the meat, make sure it's uh, you know soft enough for the, the iPads to still still know it's it's alive. <laughs> Thank you so much, Derek.